Sports Talk with Player Agent 3. My next guest is no stranger to the show. A guy that wears many hats and just added another feather to his cap. North Carolina Capitals President, CEO, Head Honcho, Mr. Demarcus Oliver. Yes, What's going on? What's up, buddy? What's up? It's good. Hey, man, I see you brought your soldiers with you. Got a few of them here with me. <laughs> Okay. How you how, how things been going, man, since, uh you know, we got this COVID-19 out here and basketball to slow down. How are things going with you guys? Well, <clears throat> the vision kept going. Um, COVID came. It kind of slowed down a lot of things, of course, um, for for the entire country, for the entire world, for the basketball community, for all sports. Um, but I think that, you know, that also gave us an opportunity. You know, if you are a visionary, it gave us an opportunity to pivot because it, it, you know, going through a moment where everything was shut down, it really caused, you know, a guy like myself to like just focus and lock in like internally, like what gifts do we have? What gifts do I have? You know, what's my next move? How am I going to counter what just happened? And, you know, from that, you know, here we are mm -hmm. with the capital. So again, man, you, you, you just added another feather to your cap, man. When, when, when do you find time to sleep? Interesting, man. Um, <laughs> you got to kind of sleep on your toes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I would say, Miguel, you know, just loving what I do, man. You know, that's that's what that's what wakes me up, um, gets me up early, um, keeps me up late. Just loving what I do. And, it's you know, it's not about me, but it's just about creating opportunities for these guys, um, because in what we do, um, you know, guys like myself, yourself, um, you know, so many other young men's uh, dreams are connected to what we do. So it's like, you know, I've come to the realization, like if I would have said no to this assignment, then we don't see these guys behind me. We don't we don't see any of these guys that's on this roster. If if I said no to the assignment and if I just threw in the towel and sometimes, you know, we press in life with things happening, you know, it kind of forces us to kind of throw in and give up. But, you know, I kind of discovered that extra fight, you mm -hmm. know, within my own self, because it wasn't just about Demarcus Oliver um, starting a team and being an owner of a team and a coach and a gym and all these hats. But it was about how many men's dreams are connected to me saying yes mm -hmm. and making a sacrifice. And so here we are. Before before we jump into the North Carolina Capitals, man, introduce man who 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 you know some of your soldiers that you have here today. Yes, sir. A few of my guys that's with me today. Um, unfortunately, a few a few of the guys are um, had to work this morning um, and or maybe coming a little late. But to the ones who are here um, on the front line with me, <laughs> Mr. T. Reed, Taquan Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got Chris Purnell, Taquan Reed, by the way, right here out of Goldsboro, um, current resident Raleigh, um, been with me for many years. Chris Purnell, Raleigh native as well. Um, we got uh, Jordan and Josh Jones right here behind us. Uh, both of my bro the brothers back here, they're from, from Durham. Um, Bull City in the house, yes, you know. Yeah. Um, Bull City in the house, so Bull City, you hear us, come out and support us. Um, and then likewise, Daniel Hill, by way of Jackson, Tennessee, by the hour oh, wow. south of Memphis, yeah. if I'm right. Um, so Daniel okay. Hill, just, you know, come straight out of Jackson, Tennessee to, to join forces with us right here and wait for us. Okay. All right, before we before I, I jump into some questions for you guys, man, let's talk about the, the history of the North Carolina Capitals. I mean, it's a, it's a new program, but how did this thing come about? Um, well, the, the Capitals started, man. Um, again, you know, COVID came, shut things down. Previously, I was with, um, you know, another league, the TBL. Um, and so with the Raleigh Firebirds, shout out to Wade Harris, um, the Raleigh Firebirds. Um, you know, Wade is a great guy. He's running a great program also in the TBL. Um, you know, it was through those opportunities with Wade, taught me a lot, showed me a lot, you know, pretty much was the gatekeeper and opened the door, you know, for me to have access to even move where I'm moving now. So without, let me send a special shout out to Wade Harris um, for what he's done in the platform that he's built, which has gave, given a, a young man like me the vision to go out and, and birth what we're doing now at the semi-professional level. Um, but outside of that, <clears throat> the, um, the Capitals kind of came because I wanted to create a platform 
that will provide more roster opportunities for young men. Everybody, every TBL is a great league. Great league for guys who didn't make it to the NBA, to the G League, um, overseas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the North Carolina Capitals vision and platform is for those other men um, that may not be TBL ready and may be TBL ready. But for the most part, we're providing a platform to get them into a professional um, organization. And so we're running it. You know, my vision and, and my goal is to run this thing just like, you know, the next level to give these guys the ultimate basketball experience in community um, in how they develop as a young man on and off the court. Um, and then also the experience that they can have so that they can still get the opportunities to go overseas. And so right here in our backyard, you know, we're not going to downplay the semi-pro level because we're doing pro things on a semi-pro level. And that's the quality in our brand that we're building. We're building our brand from the ground up. You know, we are the North Carolina Capitals. And um, so we want to come out and shock the ECBL. We want to shock the TBL. We want to shock semi-pro basketball. And we want to bring a great semi-pro slash professional basketball platform in a small community like Wake Forest and then just take take this thing to another level. Is there a reason why you guys chose Wake Forest? Interesting, man. Um, um, actually, let's get into the history of this thing. <laughs> so I was, that's a great thing. And so, you know, initially, you know, I was thinking Raleigh, you know, and this is, for the, this is the first time that this is kind of spoken over the airways. Um, but I'll speak it today. I was thinking Raleigh, Raleigh Capitals, Raleigh, capital of North Carolina, the Raleigh Capitals. I even went out and, and, and created a t-shirt that said Raleigh Capitals. And this was like in the conception stage of like this vision, right? Invested in several t-shirts, Raleigh, Raleigh, Raleigh. And um, and then so when I, you know, had a meeting with the, the uh, East Coast Basketball League board members and so on and so forth, when it was, you know, the owners meeting, um, you know, Raleigh was pretty much already um, the Raleigh demographic, per se, for territory purposes, was already taken by another franchise. And so, therefore, you know, it was like, well, let's Wake Forest. And, and kind of, you know, my kids are in Wake Forest, and Wake Forest is a great community, small community, right? And, and so I'm thinking, well, I was going to be in the Wake Forest, North Raleigh, Wakefield area anyway. Mm -hmm. That was going to be my target demographic anyway. And then... Um, and so by league, by league rules, territory rules, you know, behind the scene things, it was like, you know, we're going to be based out of Wake Forest. Wake Forest is going to be our territory, right? Wake Forest is also the birthing place because Wake Forest is expanding. Mm -hmm. Wake Forest is a place that's never had a semi-pro basketball franchise ever in the history of the town, right? And so it's like, wow, why don't we put it on our back? And why don't we take responsibility? Why don't we step our game up and step our vision up to the next level and really do something that's never been done before. Do it with pride, you know, do it with dignity um, and, and just create this platform. And, and here we are, you know, North Carolina Capitals still based out of Wake Forest. So here we are. What, what, what would you say some of the challenges that you face, man, in terms of, I mean, even recruiting these guys or, you know, get sponsorships or, or getting getting people to buy into the, the semi pro basketball league when you have the Raleigh, you got the Firebirds right up the street. Right. Okay. Um, you got the, the Cary Invasion. I don't even know if they're still playing, but the Cary Invasion, um, I don't know, was that a part of the TBL? Or no, they were, they they, were in the it was, it was a different league, right? I think they were in a similar league. I don't think they exist anymore. Okay. If I'm wrong, please forgive uh -huh. me. But I don't think they exist anymore. I haven't, I haven't heard much mm -hmm. about them um, of that name anymore, but you know, yeah. But what type what, what type of challenges have you you faced um you know because you know this is this is new this is new yeah. for uh especially the town of Wake Forest um you know again you got the Raleigh Firebirds it, it looks like they they're building a lot of momentum so what what type of challenges have you faced to to really get this thing off the ground um I would say Miguel man I've um I've been very persistent um, we've actually built and created a lot of uh, partnerships. Um, a lot of, a lot of small, a lot of businesses have have stood behind us and support us. I think in the early beginning stages, back in August of 2020, which is where, which is where we first got league approval, 
you know, the product of the North Carolina Capitals was very intangible, right? And so it was only just a name and a guy. You got this guy, Coach Oliver. You got this, you got this team name called the Capitals. You got a logo, you know, you see this color, but that's it. It's an intangible product that no one can touch, feel, hear, you know. And so if you go back to the very early stages of me even building this thing from the ground up, um, it was just myself out shaking hands and creating relationships and um, sharing the story and sharing the vision, Mm -hmm. hoping that some would believe and buy in. And it was through time, just stay consistent, pounding the pavement, knocking on doors, facing lots of rejection, lots of rejection, but ultimately staying optimistic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Seeing the glass half full, in spite of being told no, no thank you, sorry for your time, waste of your time, not yet. I just stayed pounding the pavement, knocking on doors, right? And step by step, you know, just kept great conversations with great people. Um, who are above where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Just kept, stayed up late nights, kept on writing the vision down on paper, kept on staying consistent and persistent. And before you know it, the brand began to be more tangible. Then before you know it, there's a tryout November 7th. At that tryout, it's five guys at tryouts. Five guys, right? And so I was kind of brought into coaching many, many years ago, right? I remember, Miguel, my first my first tryouts, I had like three or four kids in an AAU organization. But I also remember saying, I don't care if it's three, four, five kids, I'm gonna give it every single thing I got. Them three kids gonna get 100% of me. Mm-hmm. Because most times coaches will have the tendency to downplay the quality of their training and what their input is based on the quality of people that's in the house or in the gym. And so, for many years, man, like I was always given 110%, no matter what the number was. I came with a plan. I came to pour my energy, my, my effort, my heart, my passion. And so what happened is November 7th, the numbers increased because there's an old saying that activity breeds activity. Mm-hmm. So the more people see you active and not complacent, more people going to want to be attached to what you're doing. December 5th come, we got 20 some guys in training camp. So, so in the course of, in, in the course of thirty days, we go from five guys who are all guards, five eleven and down, I think, to <laughs> December fifth. We got some six eight, six six. We got some college grads. We got some passionate, hungry, thirsty young men seeking an opportunity to take their career to the next level, fighting for a chance to be on the roster spot to hold sixteen guys, and even to this day, right. I'm getting several emails from guys, from uh, from from just several men wanting to be a part of this thing now because now the production is out, the brand yeah. is out. There's yeah. a product that's been established. Now you can touch the capitals. Now we've got a history on social media. You know, now we've been out. In, now we've been out in community a lot. You know, now you can hear us and see us. And so now people are like, okay, they're real. Capitals are real. They are a yeah. tangible product. And so you know, that's what it took. For us to get to where we are, the the way the way that you've built this program is, you know, with your passion, you know, and your drive and your determination. When you recruit your guys, or when you look for guys for the North Carolina Capitals, do you look for those intangibles? Absolutely, man. I'm looking for a diamond in the rough. I see it a lot of times on my on Instagram on my hashtags, and that's a real thing. You know, I'm looking for that diamond um, because even I, you know, what I'm saying I, I was that coach that didn't have the degree, that didn't have the silver spoon, that didn't have these awesome opportunities. You're looking at a guy that poured 17 years of his life into this thing Mm -hmm. to get to where I am now, starting from literally the ground up, serving my way to the top. And so therefore, when I recruit, I'm looking for guys, you know, do they have the ability to serve? Key, you know, what, what is that? What have they been through in life? Because if they ain't been through nothing in life, nine times out of 10, they can't make my roster. And it's nothing personal. It's the fact that I know that they don't know how to dig into their heart and pour out right. passion when they play. Right. You know what I'm saying? I look at guys who respect, 
you know, Matt God, and even if they don't have all these perfect aligned things when it comes to respect character, like my guys told me, yo, dress casual. We come out, dress casual. Anytime we come out in the community, dress casual. You know what I'm saying? If they can't make them adjustments, nine to out of 10, they not for me. Yeah. Because I'm looking for that young man who done been through something in life, who done been at the bottom, right? And have to climb his way to the, to the top and willing to make adjustments along the way. Why? Because I personally had to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a guy that didn't know how to tie a tie at the age of 20. I was a guy that didn't know my, my, my suit size at 21. You know, I was a guy that my first real suit came from the Salvation Army for $3. And I'm selling cars at a car dealership and I done made a shoestring knot on my tie at the age of 20. Uh, you preaching to the choir, man. It's a lot you know of people saying? don't know how to tie. tie. Like, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> but it's like that was that was that's like the fiber of right. me, uh -huh. right? And so people would see now, like, oh, he, he like to dress up. You don't mm -hmm. know my story. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't know you don't know why I carry myself the way that I do. It ain't to prove a point to nobody. It's to make a statement because I know where I came from. Mm -hmm. Single parent household, mom worked two jobs, went to college. You know what I'm saying? Father in prison living in the projects, you know, sharing clothes with my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was that guy. Mm -hmm. Oldest of three, cleaning up the whole house, folding clothes, washing dishes every day. So they wonder why I like, I like things neat and in order because mama raised me to keep, she used to tell me, Miguel, no matter what type of dysfunction goes on in your life or around your life, you can't control those things. But what you can control is what you can put your hands on. Keep your house clean. Keep yourself dressed up neat. Right. Never look like what you go through. Always keep your head up and your chest up high, no matter what you go through. And so guess what? That relates to the Capitals. Right. No matter if we lose every freaking game, guess what? Who gonna, outside of you looking at the record books, my guys ain't gonna look like losers because at the end of the day, we winning from the inside out. And we building something game by game, season by season, day by day, right? We building. You know what I'm saying? And that's like our motto is like, we got to build. We building something. You know, is life going to be perfect? Absolutely not. It hasn't been perfect to me. It hasn't been perfect to any of these guys. But what are we going to make out of the bricks that's thrown at us? All right. So it's like our focus, like every single day, lay one brick at a time, as perfect as we can. Famous words of Will Smith, I can't forget, and soon we'll have a wall. And that's kind of our mission. Every single day, every practice, Tuesday and Thursday morning, 7.30 a.m., lay a brick. When we get out of the gym, they go to O2 Fitness, we work out, lay a brick. We go into Five Ball Basketball Academy, they putting up four, five, six hundred shots, lay a brick. Mm -hmm. We come out here where we are now, when it's time to speak, when it's time to be in representation of the brand of the Capitals in the town of Wake Forest, lay a brick. And that's, that's kind of what we stand by, man. In terms of, of building and, and laying bricks, man, for for the the players that are interested in in coming out for the North Carolina Capitals, how how do you plan? What's your what's your plan to to sell this league to FIBA, to um, guys that want to play overseas, the the guys that want to get to the NBA level? How do you how do you sell your product to those guys? So so great question. I've actually been in contact with a few uh, FIBA guys um, over in Spain and Europe. Um, and so I've gotten a lot of great responses from what we've done already, and we haven't even played our first game yet. Um, and so what my method and my strategy is in building this brand here is when it comes to player development, it's preparing the guys for the overseas opportunity. Um, so in that, I'm in connection, I'm in conversation right now with overseas agents and, and scouts and so on and so forth. And so I'm learning their systems. I'm learning what their expectations are when they're bringing guys from the States overseas, right? And so what happens is if we can go ahead and duplicate it now at the level that we are on when it comes to offensive structures, offensive system structures, uh, defense structures, um, how are we carrying ourselves on and off the court? Because at the end of the day, there's certain type of, you know, every guy, like we all come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. keeping it real, right? The way that we flow and deal and flow with each other in public may not, may can't be that way in another country. So we sit in the restaurant and there's certain ways we talk, certain ways we dress, certain ways we carry ourselves. When you play on the court, you know, you, you don't get a foul, there's certain ways you respond because that's our culture. 
You get over there, you respond a certain way, <laughs> they may come off the bleachers for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and so it's all about the development of the character. It's very, it's a, it's a hot thing for me. Development of character, of conduct, how we carry ourselves as men to be respectable, responsible young men. The way that we play the game unselfishly, team ball, it's overseas. Rarely you see a one man show scoring 30, 40 points a game, right? Right, right? Overseas, you see a lot of ball movement. You see moving without the ball, on ball, off ball picks. Um, you see system and structure. Um, and so we have so much talent on this team. That's my job is to bring it all together and allow them to see it. And when these guys buy into that, playing together, you taking five fingers and make a fist, we're gonna yes, come, sir. we're gonna break through some walls this season, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, man. Let me let, let let's let some of these guys get some shine. Who do you have you got sitting next to you, man? Well, t- tell me a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Um, I'm Taco Marie. I'm from Goldsboro. Um, I moved to Durham in eighth grade. Up a little bit, just. I moved to Durham in eighth grade, um, but I recently moved to Raleigh after I finished college in Bluefield, West Virginia, where I played collegiate ball. Okay. All right. So what what is what is this opportunity with the North Carolina Capitals? What what does that mean to you? Opportunity is everything. You know, sometimes life don't go the way you want it to go and I didn't want to sell. I didn't want to get too complacent or just wait for the opportunity. So because Oliver presented it to me, I accepted it with no question because I still have a lot of things I want to do with this basketball. So I'm I'm grateful and I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Since you since you guys have started training camp, um, how has the process been for you? What is the difference from your days at Bluefield to now you're you're a grown man, you're on a professional level? Well, talk about some of the differences. The biggest difference I can say is being more accountable. Um, I think in college I took more of a backseat when I knew I had a voice and I knew my game reflected that I'm an important piece to the team success. But now it's just being being more present, being more vocal in the moment. I think I've taken on the challenge of being responsible for a group of grown men without hesitating or without um, complaining a lot. I accept everything that comes with it, and, and honestly, it's been exciting. Mm-hmm. I have no complaint. What are you? What are you? What are you going to bring to the Capitals? Leadership. Um, I'm an experienced guy in terms of basketball and in terms of life. I feel like. I want to be that guy that players can come to and not um, get rejected or feel like they're little. I want everybody to feel like they're important. They're an important piece to this team. They're important to somebody in life. So leadership is the biggest thing for me right now. I want to be the person everyone looks up to. Man, I love that, man. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Man, what's the, what's the ultimate goal for you? The ultimate goal for me in basketball is to play professionally been my lifelong dream. I want to make money playing basketball. It's really that simple. I don't have like a different agenda as far as like going to a certain place or um, earning a certain person's respect. For me, if I could put my name on a contract that say, I'm going to get paid for this, I'm good. Everything else will take care of itself. That's good stuff, man. What's your name again? Terry, by your name again? Taquan Reed. Taquan Reed. Can I get it? Who, who's next? Let me let me talk to somebody else. He's ready. Jay Jones is ready to step on the team. Give it up to Jay Jones. Give it up to Jay Jones. <laughs> All right, my man. Tell tell, tell us um, tell everybody your name, a little bit about yourself. All right, my name is Jordan Jones. Born and raised out of Durham, North Carolina. Uh, just graduated from Claflin University out of Orange Ridge, South Carolina. Um, been playing basketball since I know how to walk. Um, you know, just a guy who is hungry. I've had opportunities, I squandered opportunities. I've let people talk me out of opportunities, but you know, I'm here now to show that I belong here. Mm. And this is where I'm supposed to be. And what does this opportunity mean for you with the North Carolina Capitals? Man, it's everything. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. First, I heard about this opportunity. I didn't take it serious. I really didn't. But then. Uh, one of Coach's old guys, uh, Donnell Gooch, texted me was like, man, don't miss out on this. Like, don't let it pass by. And I took him up on it. And then when I first walked in the gym, 
and coach came with that energy. I already knew it was it was over for the weekend. I was, <laughs> I was ten toes down for coach since he did that. Um, Good stuff. And you know, he kind of shared this story, and it hit me in my heart because you know I've been through a lot. I've you know worked my way from the ground up as well. So I I had so much respect for him. Mm-hmm. So what are you gonna bring to the table? Versatility. Um, a lot of people see me. They don't think I can do too much. You can ask these guys behind me. They got surprised the first time they met me as well. Um, I can bring a lot of versatility. I'm very vocal. Like, I'm one of the loudest guys in the gym. No matter what it is, I'm talking regardless. Um, I can lead as well. I like Taekwon said. I'm, I'm vet. You know, I've been through a four year school, uh, won championships. I've, I've been there, done it. Um, so I can talk guys through. I'm. Very, I have a very high basketball IQ. So if guys have questions, you know, I'm there to answer. I can point things out. You know, I don't necessarily have to be that guy to score 40 points a game. If I can tell you, hey, look at this, in this certain place, something's open, and then you get a bucket off of that, that's, that's, that helps me out. You know, that makes me feel good. Claflin University. Yes, I think they used to be a part of the CIAA back in the days. Uh, actually, it was no, SIAC, but um, they, they, my senior year, we moved to CIAA. No, I'm. I think back in the day they were a part of the CIAA, if if I'm not mistaken. But you, I should know that, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you look bad out of that. I should know that. Um, but yeah, we so we are uh, in 2018. We won the SIAC champ, mm-hmm. conference championship, and then the next year uh, they moved us over to the CIAA. Okay. Any goals? Any goals from playing with the North North Carolina Capitals? Um, Where do you want to go from there? Honestly, I, I want to play overseas. That's that's my goal ever since I was serious about basketball. I mean, I understood everybody wants to get to the NBA. But I understood the challenges with that. And I looked at my game, the way I modeled my game, the way I was trained, I'm, and I looked at how they play overseas, and it fits perfectly like a puzzle. So I believe that, you know, that would be one of the best spots for me is to play overseas. All right. Good stuff, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you got next, coach? Give me another one, man. Let's let's get all of them up here. Just... CP? CP Pernell, man. Chris Pernell. Give it up for him. About to be married. I want to be getting married very, very soon. Uh-oh. Life is changing for him. Just graduated from Methodist University. Give it up for him, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Chris Pernell. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I graduated from Methodist University. I was gotcha. actually in uh, Talk sports, a little bit. sports uh, management. And Oh, you you done? <laughs> oh, okay. Now, can, can just just speak up just a little bit so we can hear you. Um. Methodist University down in Fayetteville, right? Right. What 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 does this opportunity mean for you with the North Carolina Capitals? Uh, it means a lot. I was trying to find like an opportunity. Coach, he reached out to me and said he may have an opportunity for me, so I began to the train for that. And trials came up. I made sure that I was doing everything that I needed to do to take full advantage of the opportunity. You, you look like you're gonna be the quiet assassin on the team. Is that is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> what do you, what um what are some of your goals, man? You know from from you know from this opportunity. What do you hope to achieve? Um, I just hope to get better, become a better man, you know, just have fun with it, continue to play, go overseas, and, and just reach. Personal goals as well. All right, all right, that's good stuff, man. What you got next, man? What? Oh Come on up. <laughs> Josh Jones, Bull City in the house. Give it up for him. Wake Tech Community College. <laughs> you got, how you letting these getting these guys from Durham, man? They came, out, they came to me, man. They... <laughs> all right, man. Tell us your story, man. All right, I'm. Uh, my name is Joshua Jones. I'm from Durham, North Carolina. You know, I played basketball the way Tennessee. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be a part of this team. Okay, what what does this opportunity mean for you? 
there's opportunity means everything. You know, going through everything that I've been through, you know, tried out for basketball in high school, was cut, thought about quitting. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, transition to football, realized that wasn't really my sport. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, um, and then just being in the gym every day working, you know, tried out for a city league team in Durham, made that. Then my coach realized I was something, I was different than a lot of the guys he had on his team. So he called up a coach from Lake Tech. He saw me play, tried out with them, made it, proved myself wrong. And the coaches that, you know, didn't really believe in me. Mm. And, you know, when I got to college, even my last year in college, my coaches was like, you know, I don't know if professional ball really might not be a thing. Mm. You know, you might want to just, you know, stick around the game, but, you know, don't really get your hopes up. Wow. And, you know, that hurt coming wow. from my coaches. So wow. it's just like, and then I was proving it wrong again because I was still getting recruited by schools. I had a semi-pro team in Durham at the time that wanted me to play, but I had an injury that sidelined me for about two years. And then literally just last year was the first year in two years that I was healthy. Wow. And then here I am playing semi-pro ball for Wake Forest Capitals. So. I'm proving myself wrong. I didn't really think I would be at this point. Cause I was like, you know, when we first had the trial in November, I was like, I'm gonna go out here, you know, just do everything I can do. And honestly, I didn't have expectations of making this team, making this team. And yet here I am. So it's just, I'm all about, you know, making it through, making it through any kind of struggle. Mm-hmm. Proving it out wrong. Mm, good stuff, man. Yes, anything, sir. anything you want to achieve from here? Anything you want to achieve from, from this opportunity? Well, I mean, I didn't come this far to stop. And so yeah. since I made it here, it's overseas. That's we out. Show. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Good stuff, man. I appreciate you. Give it up for me. All right. Mr. the heel. Who's the last? Who's the last? Who's the heel all the way from Jackson, Tennessee. Give it up for him. Jackson, Tennessee, man. Tell us about yourself. Hi, my name is Dan Yeo. Um, from Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, played college ball at a couple of schools. Um, my freshman year, I played at Washington State, one of the top schools in the country. Uh, won the championship. Then I ended up getting locked up. Uh, came back home, got out of that situation. Then ended up going back to jail. Mm-hmm. And all my situations was me being in the wrong place, wrong time. So when when coach, you know, gave me the opportunity, it really it really gave me a, a, a joy. Something that I hadn't had in a long time because this is something that I love. Then I end up getting married, had my, my two little girls and uh I I really have a, a life story and I really don't like to speak on it because it really does something to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how I'm, how I'm going to put everything into perspective. But, uh, got out of jail, won the championship, came home, then I ended up finding a four-year school. The coach, you know, really wasn't, you know, too fun of me because of my background. And then I was from the city. So, he really kind of pushed me to the side and it was more so I had to earn it. And that's was something I was always used to going to go take what I want. Cause I was the you know, smallest person on the team always. So I, I went and strive for whatever I needed, whatever I wanted, I was gonna go get it. Um, mm-hmm. Walls, whatever obstacles was in my way, I was gonna knock it down. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's just something how I was always raised up to always challenge myself. Regardless if the next person challenged me or not, I'm gonna always challenge myself. Okay. And like coach, you know, came from a single parent home, lost my dad when I was 12. And that, that kind of put a toll on me, but it always, I always had in my back of my mind, if he was here, that's what he would want me to do, go handle my business. Mm-hmm. And that's something I was always taught when I was growing up, handle business. Being a man, you gotta handle business. Regardless of the situation, you gotta handle business. Right. So when coach gave me the opportunity in the combine and, and let me know, you know, he wanted me to come back and everything on the road, it was more so like, do I really want to take this step away from my family? I got a wife, got two kids, then I got another one on the way. Do I really want to take this opportunity? 
But I, I prayed about it and I was just like, this is something I'm gonna try. Coach, when Coach talked to us, actually spilled his heart out to us and actually let us know how he felt about a lot of stuff. I was like, I can I can rock with it. That's right on my alleyway. So I see a lot of me in coach and everything that he teaches us and shows us, I, I take heed to it and I hold on to it. Regardless if I've been on him a day or two years, I know what type of man he is. I can see it, I feel it when he speaks to us. So that's just the main thing, taking 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 heed to everything from coach, from the guys. You know, just learning on the everyday. I'm 26 years old, but I'm still learning. Mm. I have a lot of life ahead of me. So I just, you know, if they can teach me some things, I'm, I'm always down to learn. That's something I'm, I've am i always been a fan of learning. Never been one of those high heads like, I know it not. Never been that type of guy. I always wanted to learn. So any obstacles, I'm, I'm down for it. Is, is this a stepping stone for you to, to move on to to bigger leagues or, or are you just cherishing the moment? No, I'm, I'm actually trying to take my career a lot further. Um, I had an opportunity my first year. I had a couple opportunities, but when I got mixed up with the wrong teammates. It, it kind of knocked, knocked, knocked me out of my pedestal for real, for real. It uh, put me in a situation where I know I can do it. I know I can get to where I need to be with this, but how long is it going to take? Am I willing mm-hmm. to accept the process? Am I willing to take the time and actually go on and get it and actually working for it? Do I want to take off, take off and take away from my family? And really just hold that time. And I know it's a lot to come with basketball as far as time, but am I willing to make that sacrifice? And when I found out in my heart that I was willing to take that sacrifice and my family was behind me, uh, I knew just going semi-pro overseas, you know, never know what can happen, mm-hmm. you know, because talent will be found. If you if you go out there and hold your own and, and take care of yours and stand on 10, they'll find you. So that's why I'm, I'm really trying to work and get to the next level. Mm. All right. Well, I appreciate you, man. Jackson, Tennessee, right? You say Jackson, Tennessee? Yes, sir. Ah, is, is Jackson uh, a big city or is it? Ver- nah, it's small. It's, it's small? Really a small city for real, for real. It's real. It's real small. Do you know a guy A guy named Kendall Anthony? Yeah, that's my, actually, <laughs> speaking back, Kendall Anthony, that's, I played basketball with him in high school. Oh, yeah. Championship with him in high school. He taught me a lot of, actually, Really my role model, like every time I get a chance to talk to him, I let him know, you my role model. Okay. Even though we close in age, you my role model. Uh-huh. Grew up in YMCA, going there, I see him in there early morning, getting it on by itself, like, now it just was something different about it. So I always stuck around and watched him and just observed everything you done and how he carried himself. And now he's a pro in, at the highest level in FIBA. So mm-hmm. I just know, it, it can be done. It can be done. Kendall, Kendall is a, is a, is a tough guy. You know, he he overcame a lot of obstacles, and he, he used to be one of my clients. And he's the reason where he's at today. I am one of the reasons why he is playing where he's playing at right now. Um, and and he he he's he's a great guy. And uh, uh, you know, that's good that you have him. You know, as one of your role models. All right. So I appreciate you, man. Marcus, you got a, a great group, great group of guys, man, from from all walks of life. Yes. Um, you, you, you guys should be pretty successful. Um, I got a, a couple more things, man, before I let you get out of here. Okay. I wanted to touch on um, with the North Carolina ca- um, Capitals in terms of uh, compensation. Do, is there a compensation for for the guys? How does that work? No, in the mm-hmm. in the ECBL, mm-hmm. um, we don't promote compensation for players or salaries because there is no compensation for players mm-hmm. and salary. Um, what's provided for guys in the minor league basketball um, organization, which is the East Coast Basketball League, is um, you know the opportunity to continue playing and have that professional game film, which is a requirement of the league for every single team um, that their game film that their stats are updated on, um, you know, U.S. basket, yeah. Euro, Euro basket, um, you know, those films, those stats. 
and then of course a quality professionally ran um you know venue and uh game experience and so in addition to that you know where we with the north county capitals where we kind of stem from is my vision was let's also create a service package for our players so yes we started from the ground up you know our league doesn't promote that players get salaries and players get money because it's not about money it's about opportunity and opportunity leads to the money right right and so um and as long as we're transparent about that up front um then there is no confusion when it comes to that with the players um and or the league however where the capitals come different you know um, my experience at different levels so on and so forth and me treating players the way that i would want to be treated if i was that player see this is where the heart felt in the family and the brotherhood comes from is that you know <clears throat> I'm not just a coach sitting over here or sitting down and my players over there and I'm unacceptable, unaccessible, can't touch me and it's, everything is just business. We we gonna rock together, we gonna go eat together, you know, we get out, we can go have breakfast together. Uh, just a couple of nights ago, me and a couple of guys went out to the air house here in Wake Forest, just having a little brotherhood, a little one-on-one -on -one fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, a part of our package as well um, is, first of all, we, we wanna thank Subway of Wake Forest. We want to thank Chick-fil-A of Wake Forest and let's make that public. Is mm -hmm. that, did they give us money? No. What we've been able to do is create a great relationship where they believe in the vision of the Capitals and what I want to be able to provide for these young men um, on the road before games. And so there, we, you know, our guys are going to have pre-game meals right. taken care of. Our guys are going to have post-game meals. When we hit the road and travel and go all over the, you know, plan our, um, conference and non-conference games, you know, we're going to be able to stop by Subway and, and make sure our guys can have a good, healthy pregame meal. You know, we're working on some uh, post-game dinner situations now with a few local restaurants. Um, you know, shout out to O2 Fitness as well. Mm -hmm. You know, providing a platform where our entire team can go and receive group training and have gym memberships so that we can get stronger and they can have a professionally, professionally ran system. You know, shout out to Capital Sportsplex, um, you know, for allowing us to utilize the facility for practices Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Um, and so this whole thing was about local businesses coming together after I shared the vision with them. And let's provide a service platform to take care of these guys that have made heck of a sacrifices just to be here in Wake Forest. You got, you know, Jackson, Tennessee, you got Durham, you got you know, Goldsboro, now Raleigh, you have some guys out of West Virginia. Guy just moved here from the West Coast, from Las Vegas, mm. officially here in Wake Forest. And so, you know, let's create opportunities. And also in that, um, bro, you know, what we're doing is also helping our guys to find part-time jobs that can work around our schedules also. And so this is more than just basketball practice, hoping we win a game championship just so we can say we won. We ain't looking for them type of bragging rights. The truth will come out who we are, come tip off, right? But at the end of the day, who are we as young men? Who are we as an organization? And, and you know, our focus point is building our men from the ground up, man, you know, in more ways than just basketball. So mm -hmm. this is who the Capitals are. Where can, where can fans find you? Where, where can people find you on social media? Social media, uh, come follow us at to while following at, on Instagram um, at North Carolina Capitals. Um, you can also see us on Facebook. Our Facebook fan page is North Carolina Capitals as well. Um, follow us on our website, um, NorthCarolinaCapitals.com. So, you know, we're, we're out there, we're building still. You know, our website was just released about three and a half close to four months ago, we have about 3,500, close to 4,000 followers right now on our website. So our website is definitely taking a growth in a short matter of time since we've opened. Um, and we just still building, so. That's good stuff, man. A any parting shots from you, Mr. Reed? Say that one, say that one. Any parting shots for you? Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Um. Shout out to All right, man. I appreciate you guys coming through, man. I'm looking forward to uh, working with you guys this year. Um, home games, correct? Yes. It's home games. Yes. Um, you know, ho hopefully you guys can uh, 
I know you guys will be successful. Um, oh, and one more thing. Shout out to, I'm sorry, I got to make this shout out to Dr. Mark Galan, orthopedic specialist of North Carolina, right here in Wakefield, also Wake Forest Physical Therapy. Um, uh, Mr. Chris Walters, um, Dr. Galan has been such a help at OrthoNC. Just provided physicals for our guys just yesterday so we can, you know, all my guys are healthy and everybody can check and we can go out and prepare for this season. Plus, they are, they are going to be our, um, you know, our primary doctor uh, okay. for the season as well. So shout out to OrthoNC and Wake Forest Physical Therapy. There you have it, everybody. The North Carolina Capitals Sports Talk with Player Agent 3. Again, I appreciate you guys, man. Yes, sir.